Hey, hey, math people. Happy Pi Approximation Day. So I want to give the little brother to Pi Day a little bit of love. Today is July 22nd. Uh, if you write that in the inferior calendar writing way, uh, I guess it's written as 7 over 22. But if you write it in the calendar method that makes most sense, today is 22 7, which is a great approximation for Pi. So Pi was first approximated in like 250 BC by a guy named Archimedes, uh, which is why it's actually uh, sub-known as Archimedes Constant. And through his little method of inscribing polygons in circles, he actually got that Pi was about 22 over 7. I want to approximate Pi today too. I don't want to use his method though, he already did it that way. I want to actually use another classical approach using what's called Monte Carlo method. It's a fun twist on probability that I really like as an applied math guy, so let's get to it. So let's set the scene for Monte Carlo method. Imagine you're throwing darts at this uh, one by one black board. This is the board, anything outside this black board, this black box is, uh, you, you miss. You throw, you hit some dude behind the board. I don't know why that dude's standing there, but you hit him. Here's the thing though, you're really good at darts, you never miss this one by one square. You're always hitting within the square, you're good enough at least for that. The objective is to ultimately hit within this red circle, and you're pretty happy with that because this red circle is most of the square. However, obviously you have these four little slivers here and you don't want to hit those little slivers. Uh, you don't get any points for that. So lastly here, and this is the big catch, you're a totally random thrower within this one by one square. You have no control of where you hit within this black box. Sometimes you hit outside the box in this little sliver. Most of the time you obviously hit within the red square, but it's completely random where you land. This is gonna help us approximate pi. How are we gonna do that? Obviously, we have to do a little bit of math. Uh, so before we get to that, let's just talk about uh, the layout here. Uh, this is a one by one square. Uh, this circle inside of it has a radius of a half because its diameter takes up the entire length. Uh, so if we think about the relationship between the radius to the length of the square, um, this radius here, we can just call it r for now. Uh, if this is r and this is r, this whole length is 2r. That's gonna help us in like 10 seconds. Okay, so we gotta do a little bit of math here. What we're trying to do is we're trying to calculate the probability, hard word to spell, I think I got it though, probability that we hit within the red circle. Um, we always throw it within the black square. That's not the issue. So the issue is uh, what's gonna be the numerator, what, the area of the circle, how often we hit within the circle. So the probability is just gonna be the area of the circle uh, over the area of what we're always hitting, and that's the square. So maybe we throw a thousand darts, how many of those are going to be within the circle? Obviously most of them, but we want to get a precise number, and precise is, you know, as close as possible. So generally the area of a circle is pretty standard, right? It's uh, pi r squared, and this is where uh, that pi is going to come into play. And the area of the square, if we go back to the image, remember what I just said like 20 seconds ago or so? Um, if we have this distance is r, the whole diameter is 2r. That's the same as the length of the square. So in this case, the length of the square is 2r. And it's for both the lengths, right? If we're talking about length times width or side squared, it's just going to be 2r squared. So the denominator here is going to be all of 2r. That's just a side length squared. We could do a little bit of simplification here. Pi r squared over um, 2r times 2r, that's 4r squared. Uh, in this instance here, this is my probability. It's going to be pi r squared over 4r squared. So the radius ultimately doesn't matter. Uh, we can make this radius as big as we want or as small as we want because at the end of the day, these are actually going to cancel. And the probability here is equal to pi over 4. So if the probability is equal to pi over 4, how can we approximate pi? Well, we just have to solve for pi here, and this is actually a very easy one-step equation, right? Multiply both sides by 4. We end up getting pi will approximate to, because we're going to actually start throwing darts now. Not literally, but, you know, in the mathematical figurative sense. Pi will approximate to 4 times whatever probability we end up getting. Okay, so I'm back to my dart world here. I'm going to start throwing darts. Uh, I'm going to throw my first dart. There we go, through my first dart, it's a hit. So if we were to try to calculate this probability right now, um, obviously my probability would, would be one. I, I, I won, it's one over one. Four times one is four, pi is not equal to four. One dart is not enough to approximate it. How about we try 10 darts? 
Okay, so in the instance of 10 darts, it looks like I hit 8 and I missed 2. So my probability of hitting this is 80%. So as we just discussed, pi is going to approximately equal to 4 times that probability. My probability there was 0.8. So it's going to be approximately equal to 4 times 0.8. So in just 10 darts, I actually have a decent approximation for pi, it's 3.2. 10 darts isn't enough though, right? Obviously, intuitively, you wanna throw like a lot of darts, like a whole ton. So let's throw more darts. All right, this time around, let's throw 100 darts. So we're amping this up quite a bit. I gotta do some counting. How about we just count how many we missed? One, two, three, four. Oh, did this guy hit or miss? We hit. Hit or miss. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like that one hit 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Hopefully I counted right 24 is what I got there, so let's calculate that probability. Right, so pi is still equal to four times the probability. Uh, in this case, we had a probability of 76%, right? Because we missed 24 times. Okay, so if you multiply these two numbers together, you end up getting 3.04, and we're not happy with 3.04, because that's actually further away from our initial estimate, which is 3.2. So very clearly here, there's like a, like a range of error that we could possibly get, right? And if we get really unlucky with all of our throws, technically we can hit the board zero times. That's a possibility, because we're just throwing, these are random numbers that I'm using here. Uh, so this is a very common outcome when you're dealing with such small numbers. So let's amp it up to 1,000. Let's throw a thousand darts, bam. All right, so count with me. One, two, three. Yeah, so we're, we're not gonna sit here and count this. We're gonna make the computer count. I'm not in the business of counting a thousand darts. Honestly, I don't even think a thousand darts is enough. I, I, I wanna throw a hundred thousand. Uh, so with that said, I'm gonna make the computer do all the counting for that. I just need to know how to do a little bit of programming. So now we're entering the digital world. Uh, we're getting even further abstract here, right? So we're not looking at the dartboard anymore. We're just gonna program all this. We're gonna say, hey, you computer, you do all the counting for me. So let's think about how many darts we wanna use. That's the first step. Uh, I initially said a thousand because I thought I was gonna sit there and count them all. And then I realized, man, a thousand is a pretty big number. I'm not gonna do that. Um, since we're making a computer do it, how about we make it do uh, an even bigger number. How will we make it do, I don't know, however many darts that is. 100,000 darts, okay. So we have 100,000 darts ready to go, ready to throw. Uh, we need to make sure it always lands within that, um, within that black square. So we need an X component and we need a Y component. Uh, so the X component is gonna be a random number. That's how you say a random number in R, uh, from zero to one. And uh, I wanna make sure I have 100,000 of these. So N in that case. And we're gonna do the same exact thing for Y. We're gonna just say, hey, I want the Y component, the up and down component, to be a random number from zero to one. And I want 100,000 of those. So I wanna count how many darts ultimately are going to land within that red square. So I'm gonna say the counter is equal to zero, because as of right now, I haven't thrown any, any darts yet. So going back to the square here, how can I use math to figure out if my, um, my dart is within the red circle or not? How can I calculate the distance away from maybe, say, the center? Because that's a good frame of uh, reference here. The center is um, half comma half. How can I calculate the distance away from the center? And also, what distance is too much? What, when do we get a number that renders too far away? So for now, I'm going to remove these, uh, remove these random darts. Um, what is the farthest, farthest, farthest away you can be from half comma half? So I'm going to write half comma half. What is the absolute farthest you can be away from this ordered pair uh, and still be contained within the red circle? We know the radius of the red circle is a half, so if we are any bit further away than half of whatever this unit is, uh, we'll be in one of these four uh, little slippers here. So we have to make sure that the distance away is not any more than a half. The distance formula is something like this. X sub two minus Y sub two squared plus y sub two minus y sub one squared. We wanna ensure that this distance is less than a half no matter where you land on that black box. So what are my ordered pairs that I'm playing around with? Uh, we have the center, which was at a half comma half. And we also have our dart position and our darts position is totally random. We don't know what it is. So we're just gonna use variables. We're gonna use x and y. Let's plug these into the distance formula. So the distance here is gonna equal uh, the square root of, uh, we'll just put the variable first, x minus a half 
squared plus y minus a half squared. So we said we wanted to make sure that this was no more than a half. So we're going to say that this has to be less than a half. So what should we take away from all that? We just want to make sure that the distance from the center to the dart is no more than a half. If in this random generator that we're using, we get a distance of 0.74, that means that we're very clearly uh, within the uh, that those slivers, one of these four slivers, we're, we're too far away. Uh, the radius is a half and we're over a half, so we're obviously not within the red circle. Okay, so this is this line of code is gonna get kinda eh, a little bit more technical. If you understand the idea of, we wanna just simply count how many darts are within the red circle, AKA within 0.5 distance from the center, um, that's what this line of code is gonna do. So for every dart in the uh, 100,000 darts that I have. If we are within 0.5 distance away, we want to take our counter, which is initially zero, and we want to simply add one to it and store it as that new number. So if we're within the red circle, we want to say, hey, plus one to the counter. Do this all 100,000 times, and boom, the computer just did that. It did it. And in the moment I clicked enter, it, did, it just ran 100,000 dart simulations. And it counted all of them within the red circle. So that's very impressive. Uh, we're just going to store the probability as, um, in our case, it's the number of hits, which is our counter. Uh, over the number of darts we've thrown, which is n, and all n darts landed on the black box here. So that's going to be our probability. Um, and now we just want to take 4 times that probability. I'm curious though what the probability is. It's 0.78348, okay. Um, I, we, we mentioned earlier that 0.8 was too high and 0.76 was too low, so actually we like this percent uh, quite a bit. We're going to take 4 times the probability and... Hmm, that's pretty good. So what's funny about this approximation for pi is that this is still not as good as 22 over 7. 22 over 7 is still better than that. So on that note of 22 over 7, it's a better approximation than 3.14. So if anything, July 22nd should be revered way more than March 14th, but whatever. So I actually don't like this outcome. I actually want to run this again. Okay, so I just rewrote the code. All I did was I just added an extra zero here, or placed an extra zero here to make n 1 million darts. So let's see what that new probability is. Uh, let's see if it actually made a difference. Uh, looks like it's slightly different. Obviously, it's not going to be exactly the same. That would be actually crazy. Uh, so let's figure out what four times that probability is. And let's hope we're closer to pi. Let's hope I can spell math three words, too, that I should know how to spell. A little bit closer. Okay, so I'm, I'm still not satisfied. I, I got to run this a, no, a, a few times. I want to see something a little bit better. Uh, so I'm going to run this a number of times. So I'm going to run it once. There we go, 3.1424, that's pretty good. Let's run it again. 3.14184, that's, that's, that's good. Let's run one more time. 3.143832, okay, it, it's, it's pretty good for, um, pretty good for a million. I didn't really like that. I don't like seeing 3.13, right? Cause it's like, oh man, already off on the, uh, on the second digit there. So it, this is looking a lot better. When we run it, say a million times a million darts, you're a lot closer to, uh, pi here, and I think I don't know, hopefully one of these ended up beating 22 over 7. So dart throwing actually turns out to be a totally viable method for approximating pi. I hope you continue to math on, and I will do the same. I'll see you in the next video.